DC United's academy has produced numerous great players over the years, and at the moment the future is particularly bright with a handful of young players breaking into the team in 2020 and 2021. What's up guys, it's Colin. Thanks for watching another episode of DCU TV. It really means a lot when you guys tune in, so thank you. And if you're new here, consider subscribing. Today, we're gonna to be talking about DC United's homegrown players and what the future might look like for them in 2021. So I just wanna start off with a quick run through of the six homegrown players on DC United's roster. We have Donovan Pines, Moses Nyman, Griffin Yao, Kevin Paredes, Jacob Green, and Bill Hamid. Of course, if you're watching this video, you probably know who Bill Hamid is for the purposes of this video. I'm not gonna talk about Bill. We already know that he's an elite level shot stopper in MLS and he's been a rock for DC United, but this video I'm going to focus on the younger guys and what their future might look like. So at 22, Pines is the oldest of this bunch. I think it'll be interesting to see how he fits into Losada's system. We know that he's the quickest of DC United's current center backs and I think that if he can show off a good passing range, he can really thrive under Losada. And if that's the case, um, he'll definitely be in USMNT conversations and just general conversations of top young center backs in MLS. We've seen guys um, like Matt Miazga and Mark McKenzie at the age of 21 get European interest and actually make that jump overseas. Donovan Pines might not yet be there, but with a breakout season in 2021, uh, who knows, you know? Next, we have Moses Nyman at 17. He played 11 games for DC United last year. I think we can all think to that game at Cincinnati as a real bright spot for him. It'll be interesting this year um, under Losada, changing the system up a little bit and potentially with Russell Knauss reestablishing himself as part of the midfield to see where Moses Nyman fits in, where he can be most effective. Um, whatever you think, comment that down below. I'm interested to see what people think for Moses Nyman because we know that he has quality both as a passer, um, as a defender, and sort of all throughout the middle midfield of DC United. So yeah, comment down below. Let me know what you think his most effective position this year will be. I think we'll see a similar amount of Nyman as we did last year. Um, there will be competition in that midfield and he'll be an option, but I'm not sure that he'll be a go-to starter, at least not off the bat. So next we have Griffin Yao who featured in 12 games with four starts in 2020. He also grabbed two goals. That one against Toronto was really awesome. I think that for a young player to show the technique that it takes to score a volley like that is just so exciting. Um, he mainly came in as depth for the wings last year and it'll be interesting to see what Losada does, how he lines up the team and how he finds a role for Griffin Yao. I think just pure speculation on my point, I think that we could actually see Yao maybe playing as that second forward role or some sort of attacking midfield role because if he shows that he has the um, control and passing ability to play in those tight spaces like we see with Yamil Assad and Edison Flores, if Yao can show that he has that, he could really find his way into the team in more ways than just on the wings. And as the team, you know, changes their style and, and those positions become more competitive, yeah, we'll have to figure out how he gets onto the field more than he did in 2020, and I think that that's possibly a way that we could see him do that. So again, comment below what you think we might see. I think we'll probably see him playing about as much as he did in 2020, which is fine for a player at 18 who clearly has a lot of potential. To just continue to get game time at the MLS level, he'll surely develop even more this year. Then next we have Kevin Paredes, who he's 17, featured in 17 games last year, starting nine of them, and he really burst onto the scene with the MLS back tournament. MLS is back tournament last year. Um, he, you know, as a sub, just provided so much energy. And over the course of the year, he played a lot. He got a lot of minutes, and he showed that he really can contribute something important to the team. Although his production numbers-wise wasn't there. The team didn't produce that much, so he only had one assist, a great assist. But, you know, we we saw that when the team struggles, he can still get the ball, provide energy, and make something happen. Um, I think that this year, if he can really contribute more as far as goal scoring opportunities and goals and assists go, um, to really show that on the stat sheet will go a long way for him 
really establishing himself as a, as a really important part of this team because um, he shows he's showed in 2020 that he has that ability. So I'm really excited to see what he does here in 2021. Next, we have Jacob Green, who is DC United's newest homegrown signing. He's 17. He's played the past couple seasons with Loudoun United. I think that he is an exciting one. DC United needs defensive depth right now. And although he doesn't have experience at the top level, it's good that DC United is bringing in players like that because having that core of of de defenders who can provide, who can just become real anchors of the defense um, for years on end, like Steve Birnbaum, for example, it provides a real solidity for your team, for your back line. And if Green can develop into that, I'm not sure how much we'll see of him this year. But if he can develop into one of those those players and fit that role, it'll be it'll be really important for DC United going forward. So I have three thoughts wrapping up on DC United's homegrowns right now. First, with Ariola going to Swansea this offseason, if he performs well, I think that it'll just uplift the name of DC United and put a real spotlight on DC United's talent, that they identify talent and, not, and that they can produce talent, um, which of course Losada has connections in, in Europe as well. But these players can get a real opportunity to get some more eyes on them, and as they develop, one of them will start, or, or, or all five of them, will start to shine and really get some attention from overseas, which is great for them as players and for DC United um, for the potential of selling them. Um, and I think that's a real exciting thing to watch and follow as this season and maybe 2022 as well. Then second, with Losada's playstyle, how he's talked about wanting the team to be pressing and very high energy, these, pl these young players fit that really well. They have the work rate, they've shown that you know, they, they have the speed on the ground and they can develop that positional awareness to close down spaces, be in the right place, and really fit Losada's style to, to control the field off the ball and on the ball. Then third, as these players find their roles within DC United, they can really position themselves as a domestic core of leaders for the team. And I think that that's an important thing that we see with the most successful teams in MLS and also throughout the world, a domestic core of players who know the club, they know the culture, and they know the way the team plays. They are leaders for when you bring in a DP from overseas, someone who doesn't know the club, doesn't know MLS, they go to this this core of local players who know exactly what this club is all about, who are leaders in the locker room and on the field, and will drive the team to success. I mean, you just look at this Bavarian core of Bayern Munich players, or this Spanish core of Barcelona players who were developed in their academy. Those successful teams have that core who know the club culture and just create that environment that just just nurtures more and more success. And hopefully we'll be seeing that with DC United in the near future. So just to wrap up, I wanna thank you guys for watching. Comment down below what your expectations for these guys are in 2021 and going forward. Um, let me know if you have any good video ideas for this 2021 season. I just, I wanna make stuff and talk about things that you all are interested in too. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.